Good morning, everyone. It is the day before election day, and today will be a particularly busy day for me today. Uh, I will, the sun is shining so far, we'll see. It's been a pretty miserable week weather-wise, but the sun is shining today and it's due to shine, I hope, for a few more hours. So I am out and about today. Just a quick recap on my campaign. I have knocked on every door into Bruce Ward. I have distributed various different leaflets saying what I would do if the people of this ward give me their vote. And what I will do primarily is stand up for them in this government, local government process. Now, I know that's something that every politician says, but I mean it. And I can prove that I mean it because it's what I've always done. I've always spoken frankly, openly, honestly, I've never shied away. I've never been intimidated or frightened. I've never been able to be silenced. And my priority has always been the silent majority in this country, the people who feel completely, completely lost and completely abandoned by the political process. And they feel that way because that's what has happened. They have been abandoned by the political process and by politicians. This is not who I am, this is not what my party represents. And it's time to put the people's voice back into politics on practical terms. Things that people want, people in this ward, people in this town, what they've told me they want are what I will fight for. They want the place cleaned up and there are easy ways to do that. They want housing, more appropriate, more, well, decent housing, and they want it for local people. This is what we must provide for them. They also want, if they must pay these taxes, which they shouldn't have to pay, you know, taxes, highly put some of the highest council tax rates in the country, and yet there's never any money for anything. So if we are going to take people's hard-earned money, we should be spending it on them, and not millions of pounds on council manager wages. It's scandalous. There are lots of things that this town needs and it doesn't have it. And it doesn't have it because the money is not being spent on the people. We do have a council of somewhat mishmash. We have people who jump from party to party or who don't quite know what they stand for. It seems to me to be something like a game of chess a game going on within the elected chamber. This is not a game. These are people's lives. You're dealing with people's lives and you're dealing with people's money. And there has to be certainty and solidity. And you must know who you are voting for. You must. Now, I used to be Labour. It changed. I didn't. You change as you get older, of course you do. But my fundamental values never change. I still believe in standing up for the people. And 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 if uh, we have people being taxed who are not, don't have the money to throw around. They don't have it. The burden in society is carried by the people least able to carry it. The poorest, the people with the least money. We live in a country where people can work full time and still not afford to live, something's wrong, something is wrong. But one thing that never goes wrong is the rich never seem to get any poorer. And big businesses, big companies never seem to carry the weight that the ordinary working folk have to carry. There does need to be solidity and certainty. And when you vote for someone, you should know who you're voting for. For Britain, my party is clear, very clear, unequivocal. We say the things other parties will not say. And we say the things that millions of people across this country are thinking. And despite 
what the extreme left, who never debate, never, ever discuss, always smear, always slander, won't even read a manifesto, won't even read our website, just decide that they know who we are without even looking. Despite what they say, we are a common sense, moderate voice in all of this. We know, for example, that millions of the majority, the vast majority, want mass immigration stopped. We know this. This is not an extreme position. A few decades ago, a couple of decades ago, a few years ago, this would have been a mainstream position. But it's not anymore. It's now considered extreme. But don't be fooled. It's not an extreme view. It's a perfectly reasonable, rational view that most people in the world would agree with. We want the political correctness stopped. We want free speech back. That also is the view of the silent majority. We want the police on the streets dealing with criminals, not offensive tweets. Let's be clear. This is a waste, a complete waste. And guess what? If you need the police, if you're actually a victim of an actual crime, the police will be under-resourced and won't help you in many, many cases. They're not under-resourced when it comes to Twitter, though. All of this has to change. The NHS is now currently unfit for purpose. That's the reality of it. Again, one thing that never changes, even though the NHS services has spiralled, one thing that hasn't changed is how much tax you have to pay for it. Problem is, there's no accountability. These unelected council chiefs I talked about who take home millions, never held to account. It's a councillor's job, by the way, to hold them to account. The chief exec of your local hospital who takes home a six-figure salary but closes the RNA, as is the case here in Hartlepool, no accountability. The police chief who does nothing about serious crime, and we've seen it all over the country in terms of, well, the most notorious example is rape gangs. Nothing. Nothing done about it. Police chiefs never held to account. That's why for Britain, would institute a public sector accountability act legislating for our ability to hold these unelected chiefs to account and remove them from their jobs if they don't do their jobs. We're living in a almost a post-democracy, post-truth world. And if you do hold sincere and passionate beliefs in this country, if you won't toe the woke line, you will, be, you will be slandered, you will be smeared, you will be sidelined. I've seen it myself many, many, many times. This is part of the post-truth world that we live in. But the truth is still the truth, no matter whether the media wants to tell it, no matter whether mainstream politics wants to tell it, the truth is still the truth. And while I see in the polls there's a shift from Labour to Conservative in terms of the parliamentary elections, it is true to say that the Tories are no better than Labour. It's the truth. These two big parties are entirely arrogant, entirely complacent, and they've been running this country into the ground for generations. The Tories are overseeing and facilitating and expanding the very woke tyranny that we are living under. And what I mean by that is you've got to go along with the mainstream narrative, or be cancelled, sidelined, ostracised, even arrested and risking a criminal record or worse. If you don't believe that trans women are women, if you don't believe that Black Lives Matter are a cause for racial justice, but instead are a communist shower of thugs, if you don't believe these things, if you won't go along with these things, if you want to end mass immigration, if you don't think, because you know, because of evidence that Islam is a religion of peace, it's not. If you won't go along with this narrative, the woke narrative, then you're in trouble in this society. That's not the Britain we know and love, and I want to get that Britain back. It's a difficult road for small parties to break through, but we're doing very, very well indeed. And I want to give my sincere thanks to every For Britain candidate who has put their head above the parapet and taken the abuse and the lies that is shelled out to us. 
You are all heroes. This woke tyranny cannot and will not last. Truth and democracy will prevail. And those standing for our party, for Britain, will be part of that historical fight back and will be remembered for it. Thank you to everyone who has helped me in the Hartlepool campaign. And thank you to everyone who has helped our other brave, heroic, it's the only word, I'm trying to think of another word, honourable, passionate, stoic, but brave and heroic fits best. Everyone who has helped our candidates coming up to these elections, thank you. You are making history. We are living in incredible times. But the truth is still true. Reality is still reality. The people still need representation because they're paying their taxes and they deserve representation because of it. And Britain is still Britain. We'll get it back. We will. This is just the beginning of our road, of our journey. It'll be a long road, a rocky road, but an enjoyable road. This is, I wouldn't do anything else. So for people in Hartlepool, please do check out the videos that I have made over the recent weeks. Last week, I did a summary of my leaflets that I've distributed and my priorities for De Bruce Ward in Hartlepool. If you are in Hartlepool, please also remember that Karen King and Graham Craddy are standing for Britain in these elections. And wherever you are around the country, do know that your only options are not Labour and Tory. They're a scandal. It's a scandal. Look at, Tor look at the Tories. I mean, Labour are appalling, but the Tories are genuinely no better. Have a look, if you want an example, at how the Tories are betraying this country while we're locked in our houses for COVID-19, illegal immigration continues. While British veterans are sleeping in the streets, strangers from the other side of the world are housed in four-star hotels at your expense while your businesses collapse. This is the Tories. And for whatever I understand that COVID-19 was something that we had to respond to. But whatever your view on that, there's no justifying taking in people from all over the world and housing them in expensive hotels while we are locked in our houses, while our businesses collapse and while our veterans sleep on the street. There's no justifying that, COVID-19 or otherwise. That's a simple betrayal of the people. And it's a use of the British people's money, not in the best interests of the British people. And that's putting it mildly. So the Tories are no better. But you have to understand that there are alternatives. This party is small but growing, battered by the press, by the mainstream, but standing, still standing and standing stronger than ever. Why? Why do we get that battering? Because we're right. What we say is true. And what we say will resonate with millions. That's why we get the battering. That's why the status quo comes after us the way they do. They know we can make change. We can, and we will. Vote for your country. Vote against this treacherous establishment, which has betrayed us time and time and time again. Vote for your local For Britain candidate tomorrow. And let's bring this country back to its people. Do watch my videos, do share them. Wherever you are in the country, have a look. See if you've got a For Britain candidate locally. If you have, support them. If you want to get involved, please, please do. Don't wait. Don't wait to see what happens. Make it happen. Thank you once again to everyone who has supported us in the lead up to this campaign. I will be out all day today, knocking on doors, drumming up support and giving us that last push here in Hartlepool for the big day tomorrow. I will link to all my videos below. Thanks everyone. Good luck to all for Britain's candidates.